So we cannot take OC to define a trigonometric angle because I don't know the length of OC. So wherever the use of trigonometric identities are necessary to simplify the problems, you need to apply those concepts. If limit of those functions exist such that limit of f of x is equal to L, we know that area of a triangle is always calculated in the form of half into base into height. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to one and all. This is your Shruti Ma'am, Department of Mathematics. Today in this session, we are going to learn about the limits of trigonometric functions. So before that, we'll be studying few theorems related to trigonometric functions. Let f and g be two real valued functions with the same domain such that f of x is less than or equal to g of x for all x in the domain of a definition. Now if suppose the limit of f of x exists and limit of g of x exists as x close to a, then since the function f of x is strictly less than or equal to g of x, we have the limit of the function f of x less than or equal to limit of the function g of x. So this theorems helps us to learn one more theorem called as sandwich theorem. Let f, g and h be real functions such that f of x less than or equal to g of x less than or equal to h of x for all x. That means the domain of all these three functions are common. Now if limit of those functions exist such that limit of f of x is equal to L and limit of h of x is also equal to L. So if you apply the limit for this function whose value is L and if you apply the limit of this function whose value is also L then limit of g of x as x close to a is also L. So this is nothing but the sandwich theorem. So basically if I take few functions like this, this is a function f of x and this is a function g of x and if this is h of x. See as x close to a at the point a the value of the function f of x is equal to some l and you can also see h of x is also l. Now since g of x is sandwiched between f of x and g of x even g of x function also takes the limit value l. So this theorem is called as sandwich theorem. Next we have a very important derivation that is prove geometrically that limit as x close to 0 sin x by x is equal to 1. This is an indeterminate form we can see here sin 0 by 0 form. So this is already defined in such a way that its final value will be equal to 1. So this is with the help of sandwich theorem again. Now let us find the proof for this theorem. So for the proof I need one unit circle whose radius is OA. I will take an angle AOB with respect to x. Now, so consider a unit circle. So when I say unit circle, the radius of the circle is 1 unit. So consider a unit circle and in that take angle AOB is equal to x. After that, so we have an angle AOB, draw BD and CA perpendicular to OA. So draw BD and CA perpendicular to OA. So remember here you are drawing the perpendicular from the point B but here you need to extend this line segment such that this should be a right angle triangle. The next thing is join A and B here. So OA join AB. Now from the figure you can see area of a triangle AOB. So this is the triangle. So this is the triangle. So area of AOB or area of triangle AOB is strictly less than area of sector AOB. So this will be the sector. So this is the sector. Obviously the area of a sector is greater than the area of a triangle AOB and this area of a sector is strictly less than the area of this big right angle triangle. So which is area of triangle AOC which is a right angle triangle. Now here 
when you observe all this, we know that area of a triangle is always calculated in the form of half into base into height. Now, if you consider this triangle AOB, so this is AOB, this is the altitude and this is the base. So, the base is OA, the height is BD. So, this can be represented as half into OA into BD. Now, when I talk about the area of a triangle, it is always the angle X divided by 2 twice the radius. So, OA square or square of the radius given. Next, we have this area of a triangle whose height is CA and base is OA. So, therefore, this is half OA AC. Now, here you can clearly see half OA is common in all the three inequalities here. So, remove half OA. So, dividing the inequality throughout by half OA, we are left with BD less than X into OA less than AC. Now, let me consider this as equation 1. Now, I need this BD. Consider this right angle triangle. We have an angle X. So, if we want BD, which is opposite to the angle, then we can use the angle sin X. So, from the figure, sin X is equal to opposite side by here, hypotenuse, that is OB. Remember, OB is also radius. This OB can also be written as OA. So, instead of OB, I will write this as OA. So, changing this, we need BD. So, we get BD is equal to OA into sin X. So, I will consider this as equation 2. Similarly, again from the figure, here you can see, if you consider this as a right angle triangle. So, we need the length AC or CA here. So, that is opposite to this angle if you consider this right angle. So, again, we need AC. We can also take OA here. So, this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. So, we cannot take OC to define a trigonometric angle because I do not know the length of OC. So, therefore, here for an angle X to find CA, I can take the relation which contains OA. So, that is opposite by adjacent which is tan X. So, therefore, again from the figure, I can write tan X is equal to AC by OA or I can write AC is equal to OA into tan X. So, let this be equation 3. Now, substitute equation 2 and equation 3 in equation 1. So, substituting these values, we will get OA sin X less than X into OA less than OA into tan X. Now, again, OA value is 1. It is unit radius. So, therefore, we will get sin X less than X less than tan X. Now, divide this equation throughout by sin X. Then, I will get sin X by sin X as 1. So, this is X by sin X. And when I divide tan by sin, tan is sin by cos. So, sin by cos by sin becomes 1 by cos. Now, take the reciprocal of this inequality. When you take the reciprocal of the inequality, so we will get cos x less than sin x by x less than 1. Now, apply the limit as x close to 0 to this equation. Then we will get limit x close to 0 cos x less than limit x close to 0 sin x by x less than limit x close to 0, 1. Now, if you apply x as 0, cos 0 value is 1 less than limit. Do not apply the limit for this function. Keep it as it is sin x by 1. And limit of any constant value is itself, that is 1. Now, you can see this as a function g of x, which is between f of x and h of x. If you consider this as f of x, and if you consider this as h of x, we know that if f of x value is also L, h of x value is also L. And since g of x is sandwiched between these two functions, limit of g of x also takes the value L.
So therefore, using sandwich theorem, so using sandwich theorem, we can conclude that limit as x close to 0 sin x by x also takes the value 1. Hence, the result is proved. So, to prove this result, you need to consider a unit circle and then you need to take a triangle AOB whose area is less than area of AOB that is sector whose area of less than area of AOC. So, by plotting BD and CA with perpendicular to each other with respect to OA. Then from the figure, we can observe the length BD and length AC. Then by taking this in the form of a reciprocal relation and uh, we will get a function in the form of a sandwich theorem that is f of x less than g of x less than h of x. Applying the limit x tends to 0, we can decide that limit sin x by x can also take the value 1 and hence we finally conclude limit of sin x by x as x close to 0 is equal to 1. So now we are going to evaluate the limits of some trigonometric function. We can also use the proved theorem which we have done earlier to use some of the results. We have limit x close to 0 sin ax by bx. We have ax here. So if I have a denominator ax, then I can directly write the value as 1. Since I don't have, I'll make some alteration here. So I'll write 1 by b separately because it's a constant. Sin ax divided by ax into a. So I'll keep sin ax by x, I'll multiply a and I'll divide by b. So a by b is a constant, we can keep it outside. Then limit x tends to 0 sin ax by ax. So this is the standard theorem of sin x by x whose value is 1 when x close to 0. So therefore this can be directly written as a by b into 1 whose value is a by b. Next one, cos x divided by pi minus x. So let us directly apply as x close to 0. We get cos 0 by pi minus 0. Cos 0 value is 1 and pi minus 0 is pi. So the answer is 1 by pi. Next we have cos 2x minus 1 divided by cos x minus 1. So limit as x close to 0. So cos 2x minus 1 can be written as limit as x tends to 0 2 sin square x and here cos x minus 1 with the same formula but reducing it to half angle we can write this as 2 sin square x by 2. So here 2 and 2 cancels I can write this as limit x close to 0 sin x divided by sin x by 2 whole square. So now my standard equation is limit as x close to 0 sin x by x is equal to 1. That means whatever the value of x takes with the help of sin, it should be the same x in the denominator. So therefore here what I will do is I will keep the limit as x close to 0. I will multiply x here and I will divide by x here. Same thing here also, sin x by 2, we have x by 2. So I will divide by x by 2 and I will multiply by x by 2 with whole square. Now here you can clearly see we can cancel x, x. So 1 by 2 is in the denominator, so when it goes to the numerator it becomes 2. Now we have two functions with whole square in both the function. So I can keep whole square as it is or I can write it as limit x close to 0 sin x by x whole square whole divided by limit x close to 0 sin x by 2 by x by 2 whole square. So we know that limit of the same function with respect to n, that means the power will be the same value. So therefore limit sin x by x whole square means we are applying sin x by x 
with respect to limit two times. Now this is a standard form of sin x by x. So if I apply limit once, then value is one. So therefore two into one by one, or we can write one square, one square, because the function is repeated two times. So finally, we'll get the value as two. Therefore, the limit of the given function is two. So wherever the use of trigonometric identities are necessary to simplify the problems, you need to apply those concepts. Next one, one minus cos x by x. Again here, limit x close to zero can be taken as minus two sine square x by two, whole divided by x. Now here I have x by two. So I'll keep minus outside limit as x tends to zero. We have sine square here. I'll write this as sine x by two into sine x by two. This two, I'll shift it to the denominator. So then it becomes x by two. Now apply the limit separately for the given function. Limit as x close to zero, sine x by two by x by two into limit as x close to zero, sine x by two. Now this is the standard form of the limit whose value is one. But if you apply the limit as x close to zero, then it takes the value of zero by two. So zero into one into minus, again it is zero. So therefore the final value of the limit is zero itself. Next one, limit x tends to zero, ax plus x cos x by b sin x. So here limit x close to zero, I'll divide by x for both numerator and denominator. So ax by x plus x cos x by x plus b sin x by x. That means divide all the terms by x. So this get cancels and this takes the form of a standard. Now apply the limit here. So a is constant. So let us keep it as it is. We have cos x here. We have b and this is sin x by x. Now apply the limit for the function. Limit as x close to zero for a is a itself. And here it becomes cos zero divided by b into limit as x close to zero sine x by x. So this is the standard result whose value is one. So the entire denominator is b into one, which becomes b. Cos zero value is one. So therefore it is a plus one by b. So this is the value of the given limit. Next one. 1 minus cos x divided by sin square x. So it's the same 1 minus cos x can be written as 2 sin square x by 2 whole divided by sin square x. I'll keep 2 outside limit x tends to 0. So I have sin x by 2 here. I'll multiply x by 2 and I'll divide by x by 2. Similarly, I have sin x here. I'll multiply by x and I'll divide by x. I'll keep whole square for the given function. Now this is, again, it is in the form of sin x by x. So therefore, if you apply limit for this function, then the value is one. Similarly, if you apply the limit value for this function, the value of that is also one. Now here we have x, x. So that means here we have one by two. So keeping two outside, so we got this. So this is two into one by two, the value is one. Next one, limit x tends to zero cosecant x minus cortex. So if you take a zero, then cosecant zero minus cot zero. So cosecant zero is zero itself minus cot zero value is one, so the value is minus one. So in today's session, we have learned the standard derivative of the form sine x by x, and we have applied or evaluated the values of the remaining trigonometric functions. I'll meet you in the next session with a new concept. Until then, keep watching, keep learning, and keep exploring. Thank you.